For the most part, animals eat plants. But some plants have had enough. And those plants are getting their lick back on the animals and eating them. That's right. There are carnivorous plants that literally eat animals. You've probably heard of the Venus flytrap, for example. But there's actually many of these plants that you probably haven't even heard of. And today, we're going to find out what it would be like to be eaten by these carnivorous plants. This sounds horrifying. Let's check it out. Hello, bug-sized man. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be eaten by a carnivorous plant? No. Well, Can't let's find have. out. Number five, pitcher plants. Let me out! Let me out! Wait, does that not remind you guys of Victory Bell? That's literally Victory Bell. I never thought about that. Victory Bell is apparently a pitcher plant. Very cool. The pitcher plant gets its name from though. its pitcher-shaped leaves, and it uses these as deadly traps. Picture this. First, your insect brain is lured in by the sweet scent of nectar. <laughs> and once you reach the top, you start slurping to your heart's content. But what you don't realize is the surface you're standing hey, on has yo. a waxy coating, making it extremely slippery. You take one step too close to the edge, and... <laughs> you fall in into the pitcher plant's digestive oh, fluids. God. The walls are covered in wax too, making it impossible to climb out. And you slowly realize that there's no escape. As your arms grow tired, you begin to drown, and the plant starts digesting you alive. Oh my what God. must you do this, pitcher plant? Well, that's a great question. Pitcher plants and most other carnivorous plant species live in environments that provide insufficient nutrients. So they've adapted to get the essentials like nitrogen, phosphorus, and magnesium from your flesh instead. No, oh, please. Their that diet is mostly consists of bugs, but some pitchers are large enough to eat frogs and rats too. Subscribe, dude. They can eat rats? Rats! I, I thought like like baby fruit flies and like like real tiny thing a rat a rat are we talking about this like rats are like they can they can be like this big maybe this big is what they're eating bro how can a rat not break out so they have claws but surely a rat can claw its way out in so many different shapes and sizes like this one remind you of something. Yep, that's that a, toilet. Like a toilet. The lid secretes an abundance of nectar that attracts small mammals like the tree shrew. And while it eats the nectar, the toilet bowl a catches shrew. any post-lunch dumps. That's right, this pitcher plant eats poop. A whole I've been watching way too many videos where I'm learning about so many things animals, people, whatever it may be, that eat poop. There's so many things that eat and live in and play in poop. It's getting to the point where I feel like I might be missing out on something. This whole time I've been hating on it, like it's disgusting, but everyone's doing it. It's like the new thing. It's like the new vape. Eat poop apparently is like the cool thing in town. This is getting absurd. Some symbiotic relationship. I do wonder though if those plants poop. I know that's like silly to even say out loud. Obviously plants don't poop, but these ones eat animals. Where does all of like the extra waste of those animals go? Cause normally plants do photosynthesis where they just soak in the sun, but like these ones eat animals. How do they excrete the stuff they don't use? The favorite picture plant species has got to be the cobra lily. And this is how Ooh, it would eat you. A cobra You're in by the scent of nectar again. This time coming from a leaf shaped like the forked tongue of a cobra. <laughs> The concentration of nectar increases as you move further up. The plant's sneaky invitation to get you to climb inside. And eventually, you end up inside a beautiful dome with Whoa. light pouring in through many holes. Having had your fill of nectar, you decide to leave. And there's so many exits to choose from. How convenient. Oh. But it's not an exit. It's a window. You try another one. Oh. Strange. Oh well, you'll just leave the way you came in. But wait, which one was the entrance? Confusion sets in as all the exits you see turn out to be fakes. That's horrifying. You don't notice, but this whole time you've been moving deeper and deeper inside the plant. Until... Now unlike other pitcher plants, the cobra lily doesn't digest you with enzymes. Instead, gross midge larvae and bacteria start eating you alive, breaking oh my you God. down into nutrient soup for the cobra lily. The world that we live in is honestly disgusting how some of this stuff works. I almost wish I'd never learned that. Ignorance is bliss, dude. I, I, I don't even know if I want to be educated, but the way that this thing traps its prey, it reminds me of those, um, those mirror mazes. Roll a clip of like of kids running through mirror mazes. It's hilarious. It does make me laugh. 
Also, real quick, shout out to Dumb Doggo. This is the dude that made the video. We react to a bunch of his stuff. He's freaking awesome. Go subscribe to his channel. And let's check out the next plant. Number four, Bladderwort. There we go. More about poop. Bladderworts grow in fresh water and wet soil environments. And on the surface, they have cute little flowers. But underneath is where the cold-blooded murder happens. One oh, nice God. sunny day, you're swimming along living your best life. And then in the blink of an eye, you're suffocating in total darkness. <laughs> You've been caught in the bladderwort trap. Hey, yo. Attached to the plant's underwater stems are these structures called bladders. But instead of holding pee, they act as trap doors. Oh, come on, dude. First, water is expelled, creating negative pressure inside. And the trap is set. When you came mm. swimming along, you brushed past one of the bladder's trigger hairs, breaking the trapdoor seal. This created a vacuum, sucking oh, you it's in like a little vortex, minutes. yeah. The bladderwort's diet consists of nematodes, fish fry, and mosquito larvae, but it can eat larger things like tadpoles too. It does this by digesting you in stages. First, it dissolves your head into oh, mush, God. then your body, then your legs, until you've been completely turned into nutrient soup. That's like one of those people who like look real nice, but real deep down, they're like evil. I know some people like that. They'll get you if you let them. Keep your guards up, boys. Next up, number three. Sundews are named after the glistening drops of nectar covering their long, tendril-like leaves. But despite their beauty, these drops have a deadly function. The nectar is laced with a powerful glue, and as soon as you've touched it, it's a wrap. Literally. The plant senses your struggle, so it starts constricting its tentacles inwards, bringing you into contact with as much stickiness as possible. The secretions coat your whole body, immobilizing Bro. your limbs and clogging your breathing holes, causing you to suffocate in a matter of minutes. This whole time, the sundew has been secreting digestive enzymes as well, slowly dissolving you until only a skeleton is left behind. I'm so glad I'm a human. I don't think about that enough. I should be more grateful that I am a human being. Because I could be a fly. I could literally be a fly. Me. That would suck. But I've been blessed to be the best species on the entire planet. Compared to some of the other plants, though, being hugged to death actually sounds like a nice way to go. That's Another not a bad sticky point. leaf species is the butterwort, named after the buttery texture of its leaves. Works in pretty much the same way as the sundew, except its leaves are broad and flat, so there's more surface area for killing and eating. But not all carnivorous sticky leaf plants do the digesting. The rhododendron macrocephalum has a mutualistic relationship with the mirrored bug. The plant does the trapping and and the mirrored bug stabs you with its face. Oh god. And then it sucks out your nutrient soup, turning oh, it into god. nutrient poop for the plant to absorb. Do you see what I'm saying? Like people watch my videos and will be like, oh you just yapping, you just yapping, you just yapping, you just yapping. Am I even yapping anymore? Like I'm I have been in unequivocally accurate today with all of my takes it just like sometimes when you're on you are just on and today i'm spot on but something isn't adding up here how does a plant that's highly adapted to catching bugs not catch this bug it turns out that the mirrored bug has an extremely thick coating of grease, completely protecting oh. it from the sticky clutches of the plant. This reminds me of the relationship of a clownfish and an anemone. I only know that from Finding Nemo, though. Number two, corkscrew plants. Oh, okay. <laughs> Free cookies? <laughs> Fair enough. I think that would get a lot of people. If it said free pizza, I'm in there for sure. So one day, you're rolling around in the dirt when you stumble upon a tunnel. Where does it go? Is there treasure at the end? You've just arrived at the opening to one of the corkscrew plant's many corkscrew-shaped leaves. As you travel through the spiraling tunnel, you brush past these strange pointed hairs. They're arranged in a way that makes moving into the tunnel very easy, but moving out? out. Almost impossible. Mm. Your only option now is to go deeper into the cave. And after what feels like ages, you finally reach a nice chamber filled with digestive fluids. And a slow, <sighs> painful, death. The corkscrew plant's diet consists of protozoans, mites, and annelids. And because of the sheer number of them hanging around in the dirt, the plant doesn't need to attract them. It just sits there and watches as the critters walk themselves into its stomach. This is a pretty stupid question, but like, how do plants have acid inside of it without dying to the acid itself? I guess we, ha we have acid in our stomachs, and we we're not dying. We don't die to the acid in our stomachs, so maybe I guess how we do that too. Wow. W humans actually. That's 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 a rare W for us. 
That's pretty cool. Go humans. Number one, snap traps. <laughs> Venus fly traps, really. Yeah. <laughs> These are the ones I, bet I you've know. I've been waiting for this one. When you think of a carnivorous plant, the first thing that springs to your mind is the Venus flytrap. But contrary to their name, these plants don't actually eat that many flies. Their diet consists of roughly one third ants, one third spiders, and one third miscellaneous critters. Only 5% are oh, flying wow. insects. Four adaptations make the Venus flytrap an effective killer. First, the leaves of bright red color and sweet nectar smell tricks you into thinking you spotted a delicious fruit. <laughs> Second are these <laughs> tiny sensory hairs all over its leaves. Nothing happens if you only touch a hair once, but if you touch it twice, as each trap can only operate seven-ish times before dying, this adaptation prevents wasting a snap on something like a raindrop or a fallen leaf. Bro, they're literally geniuses. That's crazy. I was thinking that, like, how much energy does it take for it to close its mouth? That must take a lot of energy. So it makes sense that it can only close its mouth seven times before it dies. I wonder, like, if it eats food, though. Like, it's if it's successful seven out of seven times, can it then continue? Does it continue living because it has nutrients to keep going? or does it die anyway? Maybe it's like a, a can opening. Uh, the, the, uh, what is that called? Like when you open a Coke can, the little flap. Like if you if you flap it open enough times, it just breaks off. Maybe that's what happens with Venus flytraps. It has these long lashes, which look like menacing teeth. Venus flytraps are quite picky with their food, as starting the digestive process takes a lot of energy. So smaller, unworthy prey can escape through the gaps in the lashes. I was right. <laughs> But bigger prey like you are trapped inside. Fourth, to make doubly sure that it's caught a big juicy oh, meal, the plant waits like until wasp. the sensory hairs are repeatedly triggered while closed, before it finally gets ready for dinner time. The trap clamps down even tighter, interlocking its lashes and forming wow. an airtight seal. You slowly die of suffocation, and the plant secretes digestive enzymes, dissolving you over the course of a few days. When it finally opens up, all that's left of you is a skeleton. Wow, honestly, I don't even know which one is the worst because they were all terrible. But boys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and click right here to watch another awesome video.